Today, I'd like to talk about one of my favorite SaaS metrics, and that is net revenue retention. It's like one of my favorite metrics to look for in a company because it typically like is this indicator of how much people love the product and how well it's working for the company. And so the higher your NRR is, the more excited I generally, all things being equal, get excited about the company. So what is NRR? Well, it stands for net revenue retention in a business. Now, net revenue retention, simply put, is the revenue that you've been able to retain net of any revenue that you lost. So it is very much tied to churn. And it's included because revenue churn can oftentimes be tricky, especially for enterprise SaaS businesses. That is because if you have a great product, you're, you may have relatively low lo logo churn. And even if you have kind of medium logo churn, you may be generating enough revenue from your customers that are increasing their contracts to offset any of the losses that you have from those that are quitting your product. And because of that, you end up with this like negative churn number, which is really net revenue retention. So just to illustrate it, let's go through an example. Let's say that I have 100 customers and each one pays me $1 per year. Well, under traditional gro gross churn, or logo churn, if I have 10% logo churn, then at the end of the year, I'll only have 90 of those 100 customers, right? And so my gross revenue churn would be around $90. But let's say like some of those customers really like the product and they decide that they're going to expand their contracts and pay me because they're gonna, maybe they're gonna add another user at their business or they're gonna add an additional feature uh, to the product suite and pay me for that, whatever it might be, they increase their usage of my product because they like it so much and they pay me for that additional usage. Let's say that goes up by, by I don't know, like 20%. Well, in that case, yes, I lost 10% of my customers due to logo churn, but those that remained with me increased by 20%. So that would be you know an increase of $18 giving me a net revenue retention of 8%, right? I lost 10% of my customers, but those that remained stayed 18, so that's 18 plus 90. Or in other words, 20%, 20% times 90 is 18, so 18 plus 90 gives me the 108. Now, the very best enterprise software companies aren't just at like 8% net revenue retention, or actually technically it should be 108%. Uh, percent net revenue retention, they are actually even higher at 110, 120, 130 percent net revenue retention. And that's really what I look for as an investor. If I see a company that's at least at 125 net revenue retention, then I'm going to probably sit up a little straighter and pay a little more closer attention. Ultimately, net revenue retention is a very important metric to be tracking whether you're an investor or you're a company. It'll help you monitor customer behavior, identify different trends of purchasing behavior from your customers, and it'll help you make better data-driven decisions about pricing, product development, customer retention efforts, etc. And by focusing on improving NRR, you will get more uh, visibility into your future revenue, make it more predictable and more stable. It will also be a good indicator of like, hey, we're moving in the right direction from a product development standpoint, as well as from a retention and inside sales perspective where you're helping your customer like not only just come on and use a product but expand it within their business. Generally speaking, it's a lot easier to sell one more seat inside a customer that you've already landed than it is to land a brand new customer and bring them on the platform. And so, you know, I think well it's super valuable to always be focused on bringing in new customers. There should be a lot of emphasis within a company of land and expand within that business. For example, one of my favorite investments that I made, and frankly, like one of the first investments where it was like a deal that I helped source was a company called Workfront. And Workfront had this really great strategy where they did project management tools, particularly targeted to marketing teams. They would land at some of the largest companies out there and help those marketing teams uh, run more efficiently by using their software uh, to manage the various projects within the team. And what they found was if they could land in the marketing group of one department of a large company, 
oftentimes they were able to produce enough value and excitement there that the other marketing teams at other business units within the larger entity became interested and they were able to sell to them. So it became this really interesting land and expand strategy. And then sure enough, like over time, not just the marketing departments found it helpful and interesting, but other departments as well were interested in having tools to help them better manage their products and they would sign on as well. And so it became like a really interesting tool to help us evaluate like where it was working, where it wasn't within these different businesses and different business types. And ultimately the company was able to really hone in on the customer demographics that were the most valuable to them. I mean, when Workfront started, way back in the day as a company called Aptas, they didn't know that like marketing teams was the way to go. But over time, as they saw, not only that we were able to land those, those teams, but that those teams got an, an outsized return on their investment by using the tool, they were able to expand to lots of other teams and that then gave them the knowledge they needed to really focus and hone in on building more tools to make marketing teams more successful and more efficient and tools that were specifically geared towards the challenges and needs that the marketing team had, thus allowing them to continue to proliferate this land and expand strategy. Anyways, hopefully that's a helpful understanding of what net revenue retention is, why it matters, why it's so important, and why VCs get most excited about it. Uh, if that was helpful, check out my other video where I talk about SaaS metrics related to churn, specifically gross churn and customer churn. Thanks.